Hello everyone and welcome back to my Interstellar Overall Series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. I decided to upgrade the series from KSP 1.1.3 because of some of the engine problems that I was having with the Interstellar engines. And so starting off here in the live stream on January 29th, I decided to try those engines again to see if they would perform properly. Okay, follows up and well, ignition. Okay. Well, okay, that's interesting. It decided to blow up. That's something it's supposed to do, or is it blowing up because of a bug? Let's revert to launch and try a lower power, because maybe it's overheating. We could also slap radiators on. So, let's go with uh, really low throttle. It's definitely overheating. That's more accurate at least. Okay, here we have 2,000 seconds specific impulse, 222 kilonewtons. Uh, maybe we should just launch the rocket and see what specific impulse it gets higher up. Um, it has 635.3 seconds ISP, 1,600 kilonewtons. That's pretty good, but not ridiculous. Um, why don't we try and just let it go? SAS on. ISP is going up, at least. Can't say that the range of the ISP is reasonable. I mean 660 at the ground or something like that and 7... It's not uh, the, the range I would expect. Looks like it's speaking out of like 715. So I was a little bit suspicious of the performance of the engines, though the fact that the candle engine just blew up at sea level was encouraging in a way because it shouldn't be working so well at sea level as it was in KSP 1.1.3. Here I was testing another suspicious engine in 1.1.3, the Vastimir engine, which had really ridiculous performance. Here it didn't even work at sea level, but that might have been because of a fix I did in 1.1.3 that I carried over. So I decided to try and launch it into uh, orbit and test it in space to see what its performance would be there because of course it shouldn't be working at sea level anyway. So I wanted to see if it was working in space. And we put it on the standard rocket now, uh, the Hades Raptor rocket with uh, two Raptor engines on the first stage and then the closed cycle gas core engine on the second. You couldn't have used the debug tools to place the payload in orbit for testing. Uh, yeah, I could have, but I wanted to test the second stage of this as well. I want to test that our rocket is working, just in general. Because this is a standard rocket we'll be using a lot satellite. Is it just me, or do, do the, does the rocket look different than it did in 1.1.3? I mean, you know, this is the same rocket that we used in 1.1.3, but it looks different. And the shading is very different. Oh, well, we're pretty close to orbit right now. Let's see. I, f I, I forgot what the specific impulse of this was at sea level. Darn it. Well, it does have limited ignitions. And it looks like it's still using liquid methane here. Remember we had the propellant switch issue? So if I light it again... It still lights normally, so it's not... It's not doing that thing. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna release the Vasimir now. Um, hold on. I'm actually going to put all of this on a suborbital first. Oh, did I miss... I, I must have had an RCS. Or is the RCS working? Well, I said I wasn't going to be perturbed about the RCS not working. It seems like the RCS is not working. Oh, wait, it says disabled. Hmm. Why 
Why would it be disabled by default? But that's not the right um, ISP for it. Uh, I think it's because I don't have my uh, methane oxygen RCS configuration in here. I eventually did get my proper RCS configuration in to use methane and oxygen for the RCS ports, but the vast mirror engine sure wasn't working. But again, that might be my fault because of the fix I tried to do, and so I'll undo that and we'll have to try it again. I, I don't know if I'll be using it much, but I do want it to work. But the next order of business, of course, because I upgraded to KSP 1.2.2, we lost our station. Uh, the station was not compatible across versions, so we had to launch a station again to collect antimatter, and so that's what I'm setting up here. Uh, lessons learned from the previous time I did it, so I knew what to do and what to avoid, and so hopefully we have an improved station this time. Here it goes. Oh heck, ignition, and launch. For that every time, sorry. What is the mod for this awesome engine? Oh, this engine, these engines are from the SpaceX ITS mod. Uh, look for launchers pack on the on the forums. This is from KK Launchers Pack. Not too sure about the color there, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. Let's get rid of the fairing. Whoa. Oh, I didn't know I had those grouped together. Yeah, th that color is sort of popping out for some reason. Our Kerbals aren't showing up down here. I do have my Kerbals inside, right? Two out of zero crew. I don't know what that's indicating. Does that mean I don't have my Kerbals in? Well, it says Patrick's inventory and Bob's inventory. I think they're in here. Um, life support is not properly con uh, consuming life support. They're not actually taking in the food, water, and oxygen. What the heck? Tag life support doesn't seem to be working right. Okay, let's cut that out for now. I want to see where we're actually going to. We have a high apoapsis, I know. Uh, okay, well, that's not the best moon-friendly orbit. I guess we'll just have to deal with that. Okay, we're not quite where we need to be. Let's see if the Super Dracos can handle the rest. Alright, then it's probably better not to be in the same orbit as that anyway. Except... Yeah, looks like it's gonna be alright. Right about there will do. Okay. So... Let's, um... Lights on. Activate antimatter factory. Producing antimatter. Says no... Nothing per day, though. Um, I guess maybe we need to... Activate the reactor. I need my, um... Where's my little power helper? Maybe that's built into here? This is a KSP I and a stellar thing. Yeah, I guess it needs power, okay. Um, Alright, time for the EVA. Go away now. Okay, I guess... Alright. Uh, okay, Patrick Kerman, before your electric charge runs out. Oh, he bumped into this radiator. Shoot. Manual restart. Okay, he has manually restarted the reactor. So, EVA works, by the way. They're, they are here. 
open stock antimatter click. We're getting antimatter. Start power animation. Let's do that. Well, I don't know what that does for us. Okay, what do you say about power right now? It still doesn't say we have power. Does this thing not produce power? It says active. Thermal power 362 kilowatts out of 6 megawatts. Power output is low, but it's not zero. Well, um, maybe we have to wait for it to warm up or something. That would make sense. While the reactor was getting warmed up, I decided to put together our second station module with antimatter collector units on top and also a Kerbertaf from the USI colonization pack in the hope that if I moved the Kerbals into it, that they would start consuming food, water, and oxygen properly. And that would be if the science module that they're currently in, the science lab from the interstellar pack, was somehow conflicting with TAC life support. Okay, ignition. And launch. We don't have a ignition delay on these engines, too. That's something uh, I have to figure out how to add to them. Oh, wait. We didn't do that at the right time. Okay. I forgot to line up with our target. That'll make things, mm, well, really more complicated, actually. I was about to say slightly more complicated or mildly more complicated, but it's actually pretty darn complicated. Okay, uh, pairings. And separation. And nuclear engine. Okay, the music told me that to, to shut down the engine at that point. Oh, we have boil off of the liquid methane, darn it. I should have made that a cryo tank. Now the thing is, real heat hasn't been updated for this version as far as I know. But if realism overhaul is in pre-release, real heat has to be updated. I think, I don't know. I mean, it's a requirement for realism overhaul. But the problem there is, if we make a crew transfer vehicle, I don't know if the thermal stuff that goes on when we re-enter the atmosphere is going to be proper. We might end up having a weird sort of situation. Yeah, maybe once uh, Realism Overhaul gets fully released, I'll do another tutorial on manually installing the thing and getting various things to work with it properly. I think there's some demand for that. Unless somebody else does it first. Taking a look at the closest approach distance up there. App, it's going up. Okay, well that's not the closest approach distance I wanted. Well, I mean, a lot of people use CCAN too. So, the manual install method, which is the only one I've ever done, might be cumbersome. Because I didn't get the launch window right and didn't line up with the inclination of the station, I ended up meeting the target when we had a relative velocity of 2,700 meters per second, you see there, and I only had 1,500 meters per second of delta V to work with to match speeds. So, this module was left in an orbit where it needed some help. So, the next part of the mission was to get it that help. This called for a space tug of some sort, and the best engine to use that wasn't way advanced and way into the future was this open cycle gas core engine, which basically, the closed cycle gas core engine keeps all the radioactive stuff in. The open cycle one spews the stuff out, in the hope that it'll give you more ISP, and it does give you more ISP. In fact, this thing has phenomenal delta V at a really long burn time too, so it's really a tug sort of thing. But we don't really want it to be used too close to Earth, you know, just for safety's sake. So we have the closed cycle gas core engine as a second stage, and then, and then we move on to the open cycle one. So that's the launch that we have here. Ignition and launch.
So again, two Raptor engines burning methane and oxygen, and then in the second stage, our working fluid is the liquid methane. So that's being passed through the reactor. Okay, separation. And ignition. Well, the Delta V being read here does not look like the same Delta V that was being advertised in the VAB, does it? VAB was talking about, oh, it's going to be 30,000 meters per second. Now it's showing a 10,000. What's up with that? Building space stations, no matter how long you play the game, you always got annoyed by it. Yeah, it's not an easy thing. That's what we're up to now, and... Uh, no, you have to match orbits. That's always interesting. Okay, let's see about this stage. Set. Ignition. Well, now it's showing a large number there. Long stage time, but thrust is good. So I lit that engine a little bit sooner than I wanted to. I wanted to light the open cycle gas core engine in the Van Allen belts where there's a lot of radiation anyway, so a little bit more wouldn't be noticed. But anyway, we got to the wayward station module and here I am docking with it. I'm actually using the station module to do the docking because it's better off on the, on the RCS fuel than the tug is. Uh, that was the flaw with the tug. I should have put more RCS fuel on the tug. Didn't put enough there for... Uh, since it's going to be used for a lot of things, it would have been better to have more fuel with it. And, uh, yeah, even after this mission, it'll, it could be used for many, many more uh, tug missions with the Delta V that it still has left. But here we're letting go of the station module, and this is the actual station that it's going to dock to. And here maneuvering the station module to that docking port there very carefully. RCS not exactly perfectly balanced there because we couldn't put RCS ports on the antimatter collector units. Unlike the station in 1.1.3 that I had built, this one isn't getting a second science lab with this new module. Uh, the other one did have two science labs if you recall, also two reactors. This time I didn't have to send up a spare reactor knowing that that was just a misread uh, when I did that last time. But the science labs do produce more antimatter than the collector units, but I feel that there's something wrong with that, so I decided to hold off on the science lab in this case. Uh, here we are checking that the reactor is active. You can see it's active with a 6% draw and uh, plenty of power uh, for our modules, so that's good. But it turns out that moving the Kerbals to the USI colonization module did not solve my attack life support problem. And so, once again, it continues to not consume the food, water, and oxygen. And I have not, at this point, figured out what's up with that. So that's a puzzlement. We don't want to start doing, like, interplanetary or interstellar journeys without making sure that the attack life support situation is realistic. I don't know if it has something to do with um, cryo-freeze. Uh, somebody had convinced me to put cryo-freeze in. Maybe that's complicating the TAC life support situation. I'll have to look at the documentation on that. That seems like a likely possibility. But um, yeah, I, I would like to simulate the whole food, water, and oxygen consumption because then we can get real colony ships. Like right? We could have like um, greenhouses and you know, a whole lot of recycling units and having to make it a sustainable sort of ship. So that will make it a lot more interesting for our later uh, colonization efforts. So that's a thought. So I'll look into that. But otherwise, uh, moving to KSB 1.2.2 certainly hasn't caused any significant problems. The question is whether it solved the problems that I was trying to solve in changing versions. The plus side is that with any new updates in the mods, at least I'll be in the right version for them and I won't be left behind. So, so that is the status of Interstellar Overhaul as we speak. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.